Welcome, comic book fans, to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast, brought to you by, in part by Anchor, where we talk about all your favorite things from the world of pop culture and entertainment. My name is Dylan. Joining me is my awesome co-host, Akram. Today, we are devouring this review of Venom Let There Be Carnage, with a bottle of scotch and a handgun. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, yeah, Akram, how did you... Uh, how did you let's, let's just jump right into it, man. Uh, there's a lot of disappointment with this uh, movie um, and I think yeah. a lot of people feel the same way but uh, what did you take away from it? It reminded me a lot of Batman v not Batman v Superman that was actually better I think it, it reminded me a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, Batman and Robin uh, it was That's... a little bit too campy at times um, it was campy it was, it was definitely it. it's so funny it, it, it had the campiness of Deadpool, but the lack of graphicness from Deadpool. <laughs> like, it should have been the opposite. I feel like it's way... Like, the jokes just didn't hit for me. I'm sorry. It just... It wasn't a fucking Marvel movie, man. I mean, it should have been, <laughs> technically, but I don't know. It just didn't stick. Like, honestly, I think if you were to go see this movie, and um, obviously we're going to have spoilers in this review, but, like, if you were to see this movie, I would uh, calculate the amount of time it takes until the end credits and then just uh, <laughs> go for the end credits and then leave. I mean, the movie was interesting. Carnage, I always wanted to see Carnage in live action. I felt like Carnage was, like, uh, frightening, honestly, like, especially that scream and stuff. Um, but uh, the setup for it uh, was way too campy. Um, and I'm, I'm surprised, uh, with, by who the director was, you know, for it to be that campy. Um, mm. so I don't know. And, and apparently there's like a lot of references too to like, uh, old works of like Shakespeare or Macbeth and stuff like that, apparently. Um, so, because Andy Circus right, directed it. So it's like, yeah, and he's, he's like a big, you know, he's into that stuff. Right. Um, so I guess the devil's in the details. If if you really want to find some intertextuality, uh, especially in the most notably, yeah, because with, that's uh, what we went to see Carnage for, right? Is well, yeah. Well, Cletus Cassidy he had a lot of references to to early works of Shakespeare. Um, mm-hmm. So in a way, he's a very poetic character. Yet uh, the campiness really uh, obscured that. So I was like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I was underwhelmed. Uh, I wanted it to be a no bars held rated R movie. I think a lot of Venom and Carnage fans kind of had that expectation for this movie but it was way too rushed it was predictable like i said the jokes tried too hard to keep me interested and like halfway through the movie i'm like okay when is the actual plot going to start <laughs> yeah i know uh very annoying um i i always like the duel between venom and uh eddie it's supposed to be kind of like a buddy cop it was fun movie. in the be- in the first movie i liked that but then they just they they took that too much to a comedic level um, where it felt like they were just fucking like roommates. I felt like I was watching like, I don't know, like Seinfeld or some shit. That's uh, yeah, right. Um, yeah, that was basically like all we needed was the fucking laugh track and the <laughs> with the two fucking chickens and everything. <laughs> I, I seriously, I even Mrs. Like... Chen, like it was, it was literally a fucking sitcom with with Venom. And that part <laughs> was so annoying when uh, Venom was a Mrs. Chen. I found that so annoying when she was, I was speaking. So mad. I was. <laughs> I wanted to slap her so bad. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, it was just there were so many things they could have done better with this movie. I mean, like you had a great villain, you could have like, and I, and I think maybe just because me, I don't know if because like we just didn't have Spider Man in it. Um, because uh, in the comics, I think like that relationship between Spider Man, Venom, and Carnage is what really like um drives these characters. But I think I don't know, just having Venom and Carnage in it, and then you just throw like all these fucking useless ass side characters into it i mean i i don't know like the the detective um like stephen graham's character i don't know he was like he was a good actor i mean i've seen him in a boardwalk empire um so he's pretty good cool but well i don't know i just didn't really care for him that much well at least most notably um because <laughs> the question i was gonna ask you uh is so we have carnage right uh i think riot was the first uh symbiote villain right um now it's carnage so who comes next, right? Um, but that detective actually becomes Toxin in the comics. So, and yeah, we did see that. And yeah, so um, I guess he's up next. Um, but yeah, I love that actor too. He's in a, that show, Save Me on Peacock. You got to check that out. Um, I don't know. Very disappointing. Naomi Harris was there too. Like, uh, I love Naomi Harris. She's in a Bond movie actually coming out uh, 
this Friday, I believe, right? We'll have a review on that. Mm. And she um, was in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That lady. Yeah, yeah. 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 And 28 so. Days Later. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I I love her as an actress. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't mind Shriek as much. You know, definitely a wild card. Um, but I did not care for Shriek. I'm sorry. I mean, you might feel differently, but <laughs> I just, I did not care for the. I, I get that in the comics, they're like a thing. Um, and I think like uh, Shriek is like his first like acolyte, I guess. Which kind of makes sense, right? Because you know, following the the serial killer theme, there's always going to be like like followers or acolytes, right? Um, I don't know, Woody Harrelson. I just feel like I did, it wasn't believable for me. Like I feel like he was trying. Like I feel like he was like a serial killer pretending to be a serial killer, and then it just like when he got the symbiote, that's when he actually became a serial killer. How did you feel about it? Um. Well, absolutely, because there was more of telling than showing i'm almost a big fan of just showing right um i think carnage was more of a standout alone than cletus cassidy i felt like cletus cassidy was very campy still um we didn't get to see like uh, his full potential as a serial killer here um how demented he is yeah you could say some crazy stuff but like i could say some crazy shit too it doesn't mean that i'm actually crazy right and i liked i mean i liked uh his portrayal um i just felt like there wasn't much done to uh to warrant right uh uh, like a crazy person right it was just him speaking like crazy right um i I mean i like this look and all i just felt like carnage was like visually uh i'd say like frightening again um like tall huger that's that's different from the comics right um i i had a lot of fun with carnage even if he kind of seemed like nasty um i like the design (laughs) you know i really did like the design i think that was the highlight for me um i but like again i hate when like they kill uh, famous Marvel villains, um, and they killed him here. So that means that for sure that we're not going to see any more of Carnage, um, in the near future, unfortunately. But um, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, the f bomb that it was PG thirteen. Uh, That's so stupid. I was like, you know what? I think like maybe like if we had seen more into like his childhood, like obviously we got that little weird animation where like they show like him uh like how he like killed off his like family but i feel like if we actually like saw like like him like in his childhood like doing those acts it would be way more believable that he was like a demented like serial killer yeah for sure um again uh show don't tell um and and i felt like in a weird way we're supposed to feel like sympathetic towards cletus cassidy i felt like i was kind of forced to like uh yeah at the end definitely it definitely felt like that yeah it's like it's like what just because you were lonely like you were looking for like that's that's your reason for fucking offing all these people (laughs) like (laughs) yeah it's it's a shame um i i felt like it wasn't really well put together not actually the film i think like pacing wise i think it was well put together but i just think the story I think the fault really is in the writing, probably. It's just like, or or just uh, not the screenplay, but just like, oh, we're going to go here and we're going to do something stupid here or silly here. Um, sometimes, like, it, some stuff came off too unbelievable, right? I know me and you hate that uh, computer hacking scene with Carnage. <laughs> That's when I figured, oh, this is Batman, Batman uh, Robin. <laughs> this man turned into fucking from Venom, no, from Carnage to fucking Upgrade from Ben 10. <laughs> <laughs> seriously it's like but that did happen in the comics but there's some things that happens in the comics like for example a thanos copter right you could somehow throw an <laughs> easter egg like in loki right but it's like right i mean this this happened and it was just so unbelievable like obviously we got to suspend our disbelief but don't make us work to do that right because the second I mean, you even do that it comes off stupid even the fucking venom scene where he's in the the club like i'm like you really you fucking think this is a costume no this is a fucking <laughs> seven foot tall fucking alien that wants to eat your fucking brains out and you think like he's a i don't know it was just kind of stupid do you think that the rating uh hindered it in any way oh definitely but it, you know let's not put all the blame on the ra- rating because it could have been uh it could the story could have been better with or without the violence right um i mean if we're gonna use an example i guess uh i don't know i just feel like there's other like pg-13 movies that you know they still have like a good enough uh storyline that doesn't feel too much like like look 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 let's look at fucking what if right like uh the darkest episode we got was what doctor strange or or uh, the last episode right but still managed to pull it off because it it you know 
the characters stuck with you, right? Like I cared for the characters. In this movie, I didn't feel that. I just felt like I don't know, even like the relationship between like Eddie and like like a Venom. I I know I said it was it felt like a sitcom. I just I really didn't care much for Eddie. I'm like, okay, so what's your your whole mo here? You're just trying to like live your life and just like start a career or some shit or you're trying to get your girlfriend back i was like okay so what what else <laughs> right yeah the girlfriend <laughs> like, thing was so overplayed too i was so like stupid like i could we could have done without her honestly i mean she's a great actor i did like michelle harris um I michelle like williams much for the or, i'm sorry michelle williams <laughs> <laughs> see I'm, I'm mixing the names up now but um it's not important since we hate the movie <laughs> yeah. it must not have been since i i can't fucking remember the name <laughs> i don't even know the name of the dude who was the the new boyfriend or whatever dan Whatever oh yeah, I don't know. I think it's uh, uh, actually Reed Scott. There you go, Reed Scott. Yeah, I like I, I would care, but okay. <laughs> I don't but, know. I don't know. It just it flopped so hard for me. I mean, I, like you, we're obviously like paying fifteen dollars for the end credits, right? So let's talk about the end credits real quick. All right, we let's let's move on. Um, all right. Yeah, it was kind of weird, but I mean. I guess that's why they threw it in there, right? Just to just to keep us <laughs> keep us watching, right? Well, that's interesting. I think that that's definitely after the events that probably took place in the beginning half of Spider Man No Way Home. I think that that will uh, cross over to Venom, right? And that did. So at the end credits, I think that's what it was. I think apparently, I think it was like an interruption of Venom showing uh, what he's seen, right? And an oh, because Venom was confused too, right? Um, like if you describe this scene to somebody, which I've heard spoilers for, I was like, I have no idea. How is that? Po-? Like, it doesn't fit together. But now seeing it, I think is that's what it was. It's like they crossed over to the universe. I wonder if they'll stay in the main MCU uh, timeline. I would hope so. So you think this symbiote is from the MCU universe and it just crossed over into the Sony verse? No, no, no. Or I, vice I, versa. Uh, vice versa. Right. Yeah. I think that, um. Which is weird because we see the Daily Bugle, right? It has like the same template right. and everything for the, but like we already have Eddie Brock that died, right? Um, so mm-hmm. I don't know if that's just an Easter egg, but if that's an Easter egg that's like, um, it's interfering too much with like the possible canon, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I feel I like mean, this... we have variants of Loki that look like Tom Hiddleston, and then we also have variants that look like completely different too. So I mean, I mean, it could just be like a similar universe to uh, maybe the Raimi series. Um, but like you said, we do have like uh, we do have Topher Grace's uh, depiction of Eddie Brock, so maybe it's just like I don't know, maybe a separate universe or something. I don't know, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. They 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 definitely gave us uh, Tom Holland, so it's definitely gonna be happening, or at least I hope so, because that's what they're promising us. <laughs> well, if anything, really, uh, I mean, they kind of reference as like a meta type of reference uh, with uh, Cletus Cassidy slapping his hand on top of the spider killing it right um right. but mm-hmm. i always thought that venom and carnage really aren't anything without spider-man right because carnage is uh venom's son in a way right and in a way um you know everything happened because of spider-man so it's like it's so weird spider-man's to see them. like carnage's grandfather in a way <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly it's like i i don't know like i in my mind uh to get people excited what i think they would do is if they ever cross over I think it'll like Venom for some reason will take on the spider symbol, right? And then finally he has that on his chest. I could see that it's definitely possible. Like those mm-hmm. veiny things just like merge there. Yeah, um, <laughs> the ribs. <laughs> yes, there you go. Prime <laughs> example. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, which is weird, but Venom feels very naked without the symbol, <laughs> even if he's like super <laughs> naked anyway. He's nude. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just like uh, I don't know. I'm I. What are your predictions for the future of Venom? I mean, uh, it's an infinite inf- amount of possibilities. I mean, uh, they could. There's a lot of ways that they could go with this. Um, I mean, obviously, we got No Way Home coming out, so I mean, they could find a way to incorporate it into that. We got Multiverse of Madness coming out too, but I feel like they're not gonna throw it. I feel like it's more related to Spider Man, so they're probably gonna keep it into something more uh, akin to Spider Man. Um, I don't know. I maybe we might get uh, it's weird i'm wondering how they would do it because it's Crossing obviously over. it's the doctor strange spell right it would kind of, it kind of confuse me too when they when they show that scene because it was like okay well let me because sh- venom said like let me show you like um all this shit that i've been through right and then when 
the the scene change he was kind of like confused he was like whoa what happened so it was like was that his doing was that dr strange's doing um you could even go further than that and say was it sylvie and loki or the watcher i don't know but um there's gonna be like some uh exaggerated element that's obviously gonna bring um that that venom and tom holland's uh spider-man together but uh i don't know maybe he'll choose peter over eddie i mean obviously in the comics um he's always like I always think of like Peter as like I was like that that first lover that ex that you just couldn't get rid of. <laughs> that's uh that's what he was to Venom, um because Spider Man or Peter Parker does have like natural power right, so he's always like been drawn to that. Whereas Eddie's just been like a hateful motherfucker <laughs> that just goes around like shitting on people. Um, or oh, you're a loser, Eddie. So I don't know. What do you think? Um, my first thought is I'd love to see like a null adaptation, like a battle. Um, that would be crazy if they did that shit like they would really be going into the lore <laughs> it makes sense but I think that we're going to see for now I think Venom will stay standalone I don't know how much more they want to do with Tom Holland Spider-Man um, I, I would assume once we get into the territory of like more of Sony IPs and stuff like that I think that uh, we'll see different characters more often more so than Spider-Man because from what I've seen from Spider-Man uh, I mean he's been around a lot in MCU um, but uh nothing really substantial to the point where it's expanding on the universe. So Spider-Man No Way Home really is going to be an expansion into Sony IPs, right? And so I think that that will lead way to having more characters such as Silver Sable. I know they announced that a long time ago, but we have Mobius, right? And Mobius had mm-hmm. that Easter egg of uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man on a uh, graffiti on the wall, right? So, which is mm-hmm. weird, right? Um, but that could be the future. I think Venom will lead the way. I mean, he already is leading the way and a way, right? Uh, for uh, the Venom Lethal verse. Protector. And I, I like that Easter egg too, Lethal Protector. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder what's the next, probably Venom, Lethal Protector. That's probably going to be the next uh, Venom movie title. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're on the run, it looked like, and then all of a sudden they cross over. So obviously the next movie can't be like, oh, we're in this new universe. What's going to happen? Right. No, I think it's going to cross over into like something with uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Where does it go from there? I don't know. Um, Thor was the first movie out of, I always call it the Trinity of the MCU. You have Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, right? And so yeah. Thor has his fourth movie. Uh, standalone fourth movie um spider-man already is gonna have his third movie which is spider-man no way home now will we get a fourth i'm not sure i would hope so and i would hope that he would have a lack of technology um in favor for maybe a symbiote right so one hand like you know now you have this and and i liked your idea what you were saying maybe because venom is kind of like you know they're like a married couple right and so they did right. break up here um but what if Venom finds out that he has a great symbiosis also with Spider-Man? And then he learns from Spider-Man that he could web sling now or some shit like that. Like instead of just being the Hulk and like just uh, crashing into buildings and stuff, now he could mm. web sling and he has a spider symbol. And then all of a sudden he gets out of that and goes back to Eddie and he has the new the new iconography there and stuff. So I, I don't know. Um, I get like sky's the limit, right? But I, I would hope so that we'll get Null. I think Null is like a huge story. Um, I think that we need some more build up, you know? Yeah, I think Null is way too new a character for them to introduce him into the main canon. Um, I, th- I know a lot of people that don't read, like, or like us, that aren't, or like avid readers of the newer comics, right? They probably wouldn't know who Null was. Um, but for anybody that doesn't know, Null is basically um, the dark god of the symbiotes uh, that created all of them. Um, and he's doing some wild shit right now in the MCU. <laughs> Um, but they, I could see them maybe doing like Red Carnage, uh, Norman Osborn's, uh, like the Red Goblin, if they ever find a way to introduce Norman into the the main MCU, or or it's just something, or maybe Mac Gargan's Venom, right, or Flash Thompson, um, because remember Venom does have multiple uh hosts, right, not just Eddie Brock or, or Peter Parker, right. So I don't, I think they kind of like showed that too, like when the <laughs> when they broke up, he was kind of just like looking for like new hosts, right um so yeah maybe they do like a movie where like somebody gets captures venom and then they just like sell him and then he just get like gets like a new owner or something and then eddie has to uh, see that would have been like an even a more better plot yeah i feel like i'm doing the fucking writing for sony right now <laughs> uh <laughs> just cash at me sony but um <laughs> yeah I, 
it could go a lot of directions, honestly. But um, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. I, I hope I don't get tired of it, too. I hope it's not the same thing um, each time where it's like, uh, he's like, let me try somebody else out for that, you know? Because then he becomes like a whore, right? Venom whore. <laughs> so, <laughs> or no, but... Uh... I kind of is in this movie, but... <laughs> Right. sleeping around with other hosts <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and every time yo every time he he fuses with Anne, i'm just so cringe i'm like <laughs> please please spare us <laughs> uh yeah i don't know it, it just didn't didn't sit for me i i agree um a missed opportunity, not even a missed opportunity, because there's only so much you could do with Venom unless you uh, introduce him to more of the space stuff, right? So, I don't know. Here's to Spider-Man No Way Home. We'll also have a review of that on December, so I can't wait for that. Um, and also, what else? Oh, The Eternals, right? November 5th. So, exciting time for Marvel, plus the Disney uh, Investor Day. Hopefully, we know a date, um, and we'll see plenty of news there. Um, which is really exciting. Yep, time will tell. So that about covers all we have for Venom, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for checking us out um, for our second episode of season two. I'm so excited to. <laughs> I'm so excited from where we go from here. Uh, we do have a no um, no time to die. I almost said no way home. <laughs> <laughs> no time to die. Uh, Bond review coming soon. Uh, I know it drops uh, tomorrow, right? Actually, yeah. Yep. So we'll definitely be checking that out. And uh, so stick around. The video will be coming soon. Um, but as always, thank you guys for your patronage and for supporting our channel. Um, please uh, follow us on YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, wherever you're listening to us. Um, and if you want to check out more of our social media accounts, uh, they're tagged at the end of this video and in the description. So until next time, uh, thank you for having lunch with us. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm.